Hello, I'm Jay Hirsch, Director of Administration of Columbia's ERM program. I'd like to welcome you to today's event, our first featured alumni series panel. And now I'd like to introduce today's host, Sim Siegel, founder and director of the ERM program at Columbia University and president of Symergy, an ERM consulting firm. Sim. Thank you, Jay. I want to welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We're proud to bring you today's event, which is the first edition of our new featured alumni series. Today and throughout the series, you will hear valuable insights from graduates of our program on a range of issues, such as how to approach your Columbia experience, how to navigate the market, and how to be successful professionally. I want to thank our panel for taking time out of the busy schedule to join us. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Yu Chen was uh, unable to join us today, but we expect you will see him uh, in the next edition of this event. So I'm pleased to introduce our moderator for today's event, Moby Ansari. After Moby graduated from Dartmouth with a degree in economics, she started her career as an investment banker with Goldman Sachs. Moby worked on Wall Street for almost 10 years in first line of defense, primarily in investment banking. After the credit crisis, she wanted a career switch into risk management. <clears throat> Excuse me. Moby is completing her Master's of Science in Enterprise Risk Management in our program this semester. She is currently serving as an ERM leadership intern. Moby was a Merit Scholarship Award recipient in fall 2020. The Merit Scholarship is awarded for outstanding academic performance and dedication to the ERM program, the school, and the ERM profession, and is awarded to students with 12 or more credits. And she just yesterday received recognition as a top five student award recipient Congratulations again, Moby. Uh, the top five student recognition is awarded for outstanding academic performance, making a positive impression on faculty, and it is awarded to a student expected to complete the degree requirements in the semester. Moby. Um, thank you so much for that introduction, Sim. Thank you, Jay. I'm very excited to be on this panel today. We have a stellar group of panelists um, that we have wonderful questions for, and we look forward to asking them all of our questions. And without further delay, I'd like to begin by introducing to you our first panelist. panelist. His name is Karthik Dalavai, and Karthik is currently the Chief Risk Officer of Penn Mutual Life Insurance. Karthik, if you wouldn't mind spending a few minutes introducing yourself and giving us a little bit more information on your background, we'd really appreciate it. Absolutely. Good morning, everyone, and good evening to those folks joining from the other side of the world. Um, I'm Karthik Dalawai, as Moby, uh, been Chief Risk Officer of Mutual Life Insurance Company. I've been uh, in this position for, from January of this year, and I joined Pen Mutual October 2017, right after graduating from the Columbia RM program, where I did my full-time uh, Master of Science. In addition to ERM, I also manage the carpet insurance program, the third party risk management program, model controls, and I'm the key liaison for the rating agency relationship for the organization. Prior to my time in the US, I spent a little over 12 years as part of internal audit risk management and corporate finance, both in India and as well as in Dubai uh, in the Middle East. Uh, apart from my MS, I have an MBA in finance from Ohio University, and also I hold the CISA certification and RIMC on the certification. And uh, really happy to be part of this panel today. Wow, thank you for that incredible introduction, Karthik. We're so excited you're part of this panel. Thank you for joining. Our next panelist is Jay Fields. Jay is an assistant vice president at Marsh McLennan. Jay, we'd love for you to spend a few minutes talking about your background and introducing yourself as well. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mopi. Appreciate it and appreciate being invited to the panel today. I'm excited for our discussion. Uh, for everybody joining, my name is Jay Fields. I'm an assistant vice president at Marsh McLennan, specifically within Marsh Advisory, which is our risk management consulting uh, business unit. Uh, within that, I specialize in enterprise risk consulting. I've been doing that for the past two years. Prior to that, uh, I was doing a master's degree full time and also working as a risk management consulting. Uh, aside from all that ERM, uh, I also am an associate in the program. So I kind of do ERM full time, part time, just kind of all the time. Um, so. <laughs> You can tell that I really like this stuff. Um, very excited for our discussion today. Again, thank you for inviting me. And uh, Moby, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you, Jay. We're excited to have you be involved in the program in all the various ways that you are. And last but not least, we'd love to introduce you to our final panelist, Marcel Ma. Marcel is currently a technology risk analyst at Goldman Sachs. We're really excited to have you, Marcel. 
Would you please spend a few minutes telling us about your background as well? Uh, thank you, Moby, and thank you for having me for today's panel talk. Um, I'm really excited to share more about myself. So I'm a uh, ERM graduate, graduated in 2019. And right now I'm joining the Goldman Sachs as a full-time technology risk analyst, sit in a second line and work more from the technology perspective and to monitor our risk. And I was also the top five students award recipient and also the merit scholarship recipient. <laughs> Uh, and during the time at Columbia, I'm also the ERM intern at our career design lab, and I will share more about my experience at CDL as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marshall. Um, that was a stellar background. Um, and now I'd like to begin by asking all of the panelists a list of questions that we've prepared for them. Um, at the end, we are going to have a little bit of time for Q&A, so we'd like to ask all of our uh, viewers to um, have your questions ready for us. So I'm gonna begin with our first question and um, I'm going to actually pose that first to Marshall. Marshall, can you please speak about the courses that you took during the ERM program that you found to be most rewarding and most applicable to your current role? And can you tell us why? Sure. Um, like I would say all the courses are like oh, are rewarding and helpful, but if you ask me the most one, I would say the strategic communication. Uh, because I'm the new joiner and the new like the young professional joining the industry. So the strategic communication class in the first semester taught us how to be professional in your workplace. So it's more about how, how to prepare the department point to look professional and how to be like detail oriented in all the ways you to try to be professional. For example, the day one I joined a firm, I had my signature. I've already like be outstanding among all the new analysts and also the classes had in the Columbia enable me to know how to present, how to prepare the documents and how to do this in the most efficient way and to communicate the most important information. I do think like for the first three months as a new analyst in firm, the professional communication skills is really important and make me to give the people the good impression, not only in my interview, but also in my full time job. Absolutely, Marshall. I couldn't agree with you more. I think strategic communication has been a cornerstone of this program and it's taught us so much. Jay, I'd love to pose the same question to you. I'm happy to repeat it if you want, but uh, I'd love to know about the courses that you found most rewarding and please tell us why. Yeah, Marshall, we really should have coordinated answers because I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> yeah, strategic communications is probably the most um, I guess applicable to my role uh, or the most important rather, I usually describe it as strategic communications is the most important. Um, it's good to have good ideas, but if you can't convince people why your ideas are good, it's difficult to make a living. Absolutely. Um, it conveys your ideas in a more effective, as Marshall noted, also an efficient manner and just gives you a professional polish. Yep. Some of the other ones that are really rewarding for me um, were ERM modeling and quantitative risk management, just because those kind of filled gaps in my own personal skill set. Um, and I found those to be rewarding just because I was learning something that I really didn't have a ton of experience in and kind of gave me that, um, you know, really that confidence that I could tackle a wide range of issues ranging from that qualitative to more of the quantitative side of risk management and enterprise risk management. Absolutely, Jay. And I think you really captured the fact that this program provides the whole skill set, which is both qualitative and quantitative. And so, you know, you can graduate having learned all ends of the spectrum. Um, so for our next question, Karthik, we're going to begin with you. Um, can you discuss how the risk management knowledge and skills you have gained during the ERM Masters has helped you uh, deepen your expertise as an experienced professional in your current role? Absolutely, Marshall. And, uh... I would say uh, in terms of knowledge and skills, and I think it is, the question has been voted skillfully, I would say, uh, both in theory as well as in practice, and now you gain a lot in this program. Uh, the core curriculum of the program now enriches anyone's, you know, I have been practicing uh, risk management for more than 12 years before I came into the program, and I gained much more than what I had learned in that 12 years of experience, right? Uh, it conceptually you know, made uh, me much better. And then uh, just the value-based ERM courses 
the reason I even you know, wanted to enroll into this program. And uh, uh, as a professional, I had the challenge of you not know, quantifying every risk category. It's easier to do when there are you know, direct financial metrics associated with those risks. But uh, uh, the more qualitative ones, and I think that's key. And to the earlier point that Marshall and Jean made, uh, you know, the communication part that you uh, learn through the course of the program is just a strategic communication gives you the concepts and the theories, but you get to practice that across every course that you take through the program. And uh, also uh, the people skills of it, right? The way you engage with your you know, faculty members, the way you are expected to engage with your team members are kind of exceptional and you know, builds that confidence in you as a risk professional because uh, on, in a day-to-day -day life, that's exactly what I do. What I did in my classroom is what I did do in my meeting rooms at work. So you, know, you talk about risk concepts, which are not easy for others to comprehend. And also you do get to practice that through the course of the program. And you know, you continue that as you not know, being a new hire, or you know, if you are going to continue in the risk management uh, you know, experience that you currently have with your organization. Absolutely. I, and, and I couldn't agree more. I think that the technical skills, the interpersonal skills, you know, working so closely with teams, I mean, all of that is so reflective of a real world professional environment. Um, and as you said, creating stakeholder buy-in with communication is so important. Um, Marshall, if you wouldn't mind answering the same question, but uh, in your case, how did it help you become a successful new hire? Sure, um, I, I should base on my own experience. So I had my first master's degree in management. So I have like completely no knowledge in risk. Okay. And I, I, I back to China, work in consulting for two years. And then I came to the US to study my enterprise risk management program. So I want to have the career transition. And this program enabled me to have all the foundational knowledge of risk, not only about the history of the, how the risk concepts like involve and also about like what's the best practices in the industry right now. So all this knowledge enabled me to have the terminology and the common language to speak with the people in the risk division, but also in the first line and third line. So having this all the risk foundational knowledge, as well as the additional like advanced knowledge learned from the value-based CRM courses. Like after I joined a firm, I'm able to quickly understand what's our risk structure, what's the terminology we use, and what regulations and policies we are aligned with or we are complying with. So um, I do think this program enabled me to do the career transition successfully, then my dream job, as well as to be uh, successful in my uh, first three months as a new hire. That's so incredible to hear, Marshall. And I think I hear from you that this program really prepared you to hit the ground running. Um, and I think that's so important when you're entering the professional world, right? Just to be able to do that gives you a leg up on everyone else. Exactly. Um, all right, so I think we can move on to our third question. And Jay, we're going to begin with you. Um, can you discuss your path back into the professional world? And specifically, if you could talk about it with respect to um, recruiters, the career design lab and networking, and the role played by each in your job search. And then if you could also address which of these avenues proved to be most useful to you, I think a lot of our students who are looking to get back into the professional environment would really appreciate getting advice on this. Yeah, of course, a uh, big topic. And I'm sure this is probably the most interesting to some people who are tuning in today. So uh, I think we can cover this in some depth here. Uh, so going through a couple of things, uh, when searching for a job, networking is probably the most important thing in my opinion anyways. Um, making sure you're reaching out to people who you know, your friends who work in the industry, or if they work in a company, that does something related to what you want to do and you find a job opening reaching out to them asking for a referral to me that's the most effective way that i found to get at least a first round interview and then from there the skills that you picked up in the program will help you like carry you through that process in terms of the career design lab um very helpful honestly i've actually been more involved than recently like in recruiting for like my own company and we just hired somebody from the program oh, um, nice. so they are like great resource in that sense I got very lucky in my own job line. I didn't actually go to the career design lab all that much, but I have worked with them recently. They are very highly, um, they're great. <laughs> That's a short way of saying that, they're great. Um, in terms of other avenues to look for, uh, definitely uh, make sure you're reaching out to faculty members. Um, 
yep. making a good impression in class, doing very well, doing well in your assignments. If you do all that and you make a good impression, they're probably more likely to say, oh, hey, I know this person or I know this person in my network and I'm willing to go ahead and introduce you to them and open up avenues that way. Um, that's another way that I got a couple interviews when I was coming out of school. One piece of advice I give to students when working with recruiters is making sure that you know your own skill set and why you were qualified for a job and making sure that you convey that uh, in a very effective and efficient manner like we learned in strategic communications. Okay. Um, the students here are highly qualified and I'm sure they're ready for a lot of different types of jobs. Um, so just be confident in yourself. I guess you really have to advocate for yourself when you're dealing with recruiters. I completely agree. Um, and I agree with you. I think networking is such a quintessential part of finding a job. But I will ask you, do you think that the quality of your networking changed, improved, or was compromised, considering that we are in the midst of, you know, a pandemic? Um, are there any uh, pieces of advice you might have on how best to network at this time? Finding ways to talk to people, really just kind of inserting yourself into a conversation in a natural way is an important and can lead to a good outcome as long as you're doing it in a way that's kind of empathetic, if that makes sense. And creative, absolutely. I think that was a great um, uh, tip for our students. Um, thank you so much for sharing that, really appreciate it. Um, all right, Marshall, I'm gonna actually turn to you um, and ask you what was most useful for you. Um, and please do tell us how um, you, know, you ended up in the role that you did at Goldman Sachs. Sure. Um, I would love to like echo Jay's point. Like, networking is really important. When I was a student, I tried to meet with as much people as I can, including the faculties and alumni. Like, I actually met with Jay outside of the schools, like for the <laughs> more like informative like interview. And also, uh, like after I joined the goal, I know networking is like lifelong things, right? So right now, you need to build your relationship and build your professional network in the firm enable you to like make your work easier. So I still need to network with the most of the people. The networking skills is you need to develop and use it like lifelong. But uh, as I was the intern at Career Design Lab, I should also, I should also want to uh, promote or emphasize like how useful the Career Design Lab is. Yeah. When I prepare my interview or when I do my job search, we do like Career Design Lab send out information on a weekly basis. So we will know the openings available in addition to our own research. And also I did my resume polish as well as all the mock interviews with a career coach. So Marietta is really helpful. So when I did, uh, when I prepared for my interview with Goldman and other opportunities, every time she had the mock interview with me one day prior to my interview, no matter how late it is, maybe at nighttime, she's still like waiting to uh, do the mock interview with me. So I do think our career coach are very supportive, helpful, and willing to help. So never, never like feel, never hesitate to ask them or reach out to them for any questions you have. Start from the job search until the salary negotiation. So they are professional and they are helpful. That's, those are all incredible points. I couldn't agree more. I think CDL from helping us build a resume to doing mock interviews with us, to giving you advice on how to present yourself. I think all of those things are available to us. And not to mention all the emails we get with uh, job postings from the CDL on almost a daily basis as well. So I think that's, um, you know, that's another great highlight of this program. All right, um, I think we can move on to our next question. And uh, Karthik, we'd like to start with you. Um, can you discuss some of the challenges that you've faced in balancing work and academics? And can you provide advice for current students who are following a similar path? Sure, Robbie. And uh, probably handle the latter part of the question first. So <laughs> in terms of an advice, I think uh, what is essential is you not know, planning and communication. So by planning, what I mean is now, uh, even before I started my first semester, I knew which classes, what time I'm going to take for each of the quarters. And of course, something else gets opened up. You have some flexibility, but at least have a plan through the end of the program to know what you're going to do and when you're going to do that. And you know, communicate with your you know, uh, stakeholders, by stakeholders being them, your better half, or you know, if you have uh, your manager at work, if your colleagues at work, you know, tell them you know, what you're going to. Some um, uh, weeks, you know, 
can be heavy lifting in the program and some weeks it can be heavy lifting at work. So you need to balance that out and you know, talk to your you know, team members at the program as well as the faculty members so that you now you know everyone knows what you're doing and, and you know, doing both work and uh, intensive you no know, academic work such as the you know, ERM program is a bit of a heavy lift and quite challenging. So you know, uh, planning and communication are two key things that come to my mind. Uh, Personally, I took a sabbatical from my work uh, when I joined the program. So I was a full-time student, but uh, there was this one quarter when I was a teaching associate. And uh, so I would consider that as work. And no, uh, this is exactly what I did. Now set the expectations right even before you start anything and you know, uh, go through it. And if at all you think that you will be running into some kind of headwind, keep everyone informed so that you don't surprise or get surprised. I think those are great points. I think if you can really be transparent and fully communicate with everyone in your ecosystem, it really helps. Um, I personally have two young kids and I'm a full-time mother and was doing this program um, and managing everything required exactly what you said, a lot of open communication and a lot of planning, strategic planning. Absolutely. <laughs> um, all right, um, I would like to turn to Jay now to answer that question. Yeah, of course. Uh, my answer is very similar. Like, honestly, it's difficult uh, trying to balance a lot of things. So I was taking full time classes and working full time. And I, one semester I was a teaching assistant, too. So it's, it can be a lot sometimes. Um, the best advice I can give is one, surround yourself with good people. Like I was very fortunate throughout the program to have like phenomenal teammates. And the program is so heavily like team project oriented that if you're with a good group, it makes your life significantly easier. And if you're not, I never had that experience, but I could imagine it'd be harder. Um, so that's Absolutely. my biggest piece of advice there in terms of balancing like, you know, work demands and school demands at the same time, just like Karthik said, it's a lot of advanced planning. It's mapping out your semester ahead of time, understanding when your workflows are going to start to kind of pile up and bottleneck at certain places. Um, also making sure you carve out a little bit of time to relax every once in a while. It can be hard to find that time, but it's hard to go 14 weeks of just sprinting all the time. So making sure that you carve out those little snippets that are just your own, um, you know, kind of helps you keep going and keep things light. <laughs> Absolutely. Did you, did you find that there were different periods of time when you could maybe rely on your teammates a little bit more uh, when you found yourself, uh, you know, um, on a tight deadline with work? Yeah, so let, let me give you an anecdote, I guess. Uh, so I was taking ERA modeling my final semester and I was working with a couple of group mates. No, sorry, actually this is value based. Uh, I was working with a couple of group mates. I had a fever of like a hundred and something and I think the model was due in like two days. Oh. And I just texted my team members and both were like, no worries, we got it. Um, totally have your back here. So like developing that kind of rapport with your teammates um, just makes it so much easier for them to be able to pick up the ball and carry things when you need them to. And, you know, also just being willing to do that for them in return makes things easier too. Um, so yeah, uh, surround yourself with good people. That's the key message there. I couldn't agree more. Um, it really helps to have a great team. I felt that way throughout the course of uh, my program as well. Um, Marshall, would you mind answering the question for us as well? Sure. Um, I have a similar experience like in my t last two semesters, I'm working as a part-time internship. Uh, at CDL and also um, I have my full-time classes. Um, so it's it's really hard to like balance everything, especially you want to deliver the good quality works as well as a good quality assignments. So for me, it's like I set a clear goal for myself, like what's my goal for this semester? I want to be successful, like have the high GPA in the classes. And also um, I want to like deliver the good work and my internship as well as to build my network and try to do the job search. So I set my goals so I know how I prioritize things. Mm -hmm. And for me, I have my personal preference. So every day I do have my to-do list. So I break down all the tasks into like the list. For me, it's like, it's feels self like achievement when you cross like the things you've done. So uh, I, I do use this to-do list to track myself. Um, I do think this is a useful way and it's helped you to develop your time management skills not only like when you study, but also like after you graduate in the work, it's also very helpful. And I do agree like the transparent communications, it's important and also be reliable. 
like if you are reliable, people will trust you and they will get your back and help you. I do think these are all like important to uh, balance the works and the life. Absolutely, building that reputational capital helps no matter what you're doing, right? Um, so just to recap, it sounds like the way to get through this program is to be extremely organized, very transparent, communicate well, pick really good teammates, occasionally take some time out to enjoy yourself. Did I capture everything? I have one follow on question on this. Um, a lot of our professors end up being in industry practitioners and are well aware of all the various uh, demands on us. Uh, did you find that the professors were extremely uh, helpful in helping us also manage whatever you know, issues might come up with respect to time? I found that to be the case. Go ahead, Jay. Yeah. yeah. You bring up a very good point, and I forgot to mention that, so I'm glad that you did. Uh, if you are ever struggling, your professors are more than happy to help you out with whatever the problem is there. Um, so current students, prospective students, past graduated students who need to send a thank you note to their professors. Um, yeah, they're always more than willing to work with you, so don't be afraid to reach out to them. That's an excellent point. I better start writing up all my thank you notes. <laughs> Karthik? Uh, in my case, you now there were two specific instances when I had to request for an extension, and you now uh, it was not given right away. So it's not that you, know, you get to have that every time you request for one. But you know, uh, after they understood the circumstances, they were accommodative enough to do that. So you now, um, again, it goes back to being transparent and you now having the constant communication with your faculty members. I uh, agree with Jay, like professors are all very nice, reachable, and they're also very responsive. Like we reply the message or email super fast. So this is all experience in my case. And also when I was in school, they do have the office hour. I know right now all the professors have their virtual office hours. So it's easy to reach out to them in a specific time. And um, they're always helpful, not only related to classes, as also like about your career suggestions, all the industry questions, anything they have, like they can help you. Otherwise they will refer you to someone they know. So uh, never feel free to ask them. Yes, absolutely. And I found that despite office hours, professors were extremely flexible when it came to making time to speak to the students, despite having their own full careers <laughs> and high pressure jobs. Thank you so much for um, all of those excellent tips. I think all of our viewers will really appreciate that. Um, okay, so let's move on to our next question. Um, and I guess we're going to start with you, Karthik, because this is probably quite relevant mm -hmm. to you. Um, can you discuss how you best leverage the ERM masters for career growth and advancement within your institution? Absolutely. And uh, um, just as I mentioned in my background, uh, I joined Penn Mutual right after graduating from uh, Columbia. And uh, one of the reasons I think they picked me and I picked them is you know, Penn Mutual uh, follows the value based ERM approach. So, you know how they do it. So, you no, know, so that's, you know, that's, um, I started out a good note. And in terms of, uh, now, one key thing I would say, apart from uh, now, the communication aspect of it, the concepts and theories that you use. Uh, I was new to the US when I moved in uh, to join this program. And uh, no, uh, technically, uh, Penn Mutual Jobs is the first one for me here in the US. And uh, on hindsight, the most useful course that I took at the program is the external stakeholder requirements. Wow. I don't think a lot of people know would appreciate it, uh, the kind of impact it creates, the, the kind of knowledge you get by you know, from that course specifically, because uh, you now three months into my new job, uh, I was asked to you know, start licensing with the rating agencies. And you know, uh, I would have not known the A or B or know the, the specifics of what to do with it, but for the course. And you now that's when I realized that now how well covered the, the curriculum at the, now, uh, the ER program is. And in terms of you know, the other thing that I manage is the corporate insurance program. And uh, now Jay would know, uh, I think you know, he's part of the you know, that world. And you know, there are a lot of specific things that you know, is the geographic specific and uh, the program prepares you for that. Uh, it's globally applicable, the concepts, the risk management concept is globally applicable, but there are elements within the program um, that's 
more specifically to you as the kind of a, someone who's new to the geography, it kind of jumpstarts you and you know, levels the play field for you against you no know, other, other candidates that the organization might be looking at. I think those are excellent points. Um, I found external stakeholders to be an incredibly helpful course and the amount of information that we learned um, and you know, just being able to understand what is important to various stakeholders, particularly within the world of risk, it was just eye-opening. So really appreciate all of your insights on that. Okay. Uh, Marshall, would you um, also please tell us um, and answer that question for us? Sure. Um, I, I do share this. Uh, I do share this with them after I joined the firm a few months later. After I joined the firm, I realized how well designed our curriculum is because I have another new analyst join at the same time. He graduated from another risk programs and we had a discussion about what we've learned from the school. And I realized like our courses are well designed to cover each type of the risk. So for each type of risk, we have a specific courses, for example, the strategic risk, operational risk, technology risk and financial risk and also insurance risk. So it depends on your career interest, you do have like the multiple options or choices in the whole program. Um, I com like I compared with their program, they did, they, they only have like classic like financial and insurance, mm -hmm. but they didn't cover like the most of them. So um, I like, I was grateful, like I joined this program and I have learned all the knowledge from the different courses. That's I think this is like the valuable point. Yes, this is a valuable point after I work, I realized. Um, another point is like right now, I know the program also have more like coding related courses. I think last year or the year uh, earlier, our program have more coding related courses to meet the demanding, demands in the market. And also we have like coding seminar as Jay mentioned at the beginning of the event. So this are the, what the hot topic in the industry and what we are trying to learn as well in the company. Learning the coding skills along with the ERM or along with the risk analysis or risk assessment are super helpful in the work. So I do think like these skills or knowledge enable us to land a job when be successful after you find the job. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you brought up a great point. We continue to have um, seminars on coding. Um, and even after you've graduated from the program, I believe you can still participate in those so that so yeah. you have continued learning, lifelong learning, and you can continue to enhance whatever skill set you need to develop for your professional environment. Jay, would you would you uh, answer that question for us as well? Yeah, of course. Um, so in terms of how I leverage ERM for career growth as in my institution. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, how did you best leverage this master's for career growth, uh, I guess, at Marsh McLennan? Yep. Yeah, uh, so it really helped me jump the learning curve, honestly. Everything that Marshall just said, um, you know, you come in with a great skill set, probably more well prepared than just about, I don't want to say everybody else, but <laughs> probably most of them. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it, it gives you a lot of confidence going into things. It gives you the base set of terminology. You speak the same language as everybody else, which is important to make sure that you can communicate easily, excuse me, quickly. Uh, in terms of um, other things with career growth, you know, like uh, learning how to negotiate a salary coming into a new job, learning how to, um, you know, navigate the workplace and build relationships. Those are kind of things you learn on the job, but also, you know, the program kind of helps you think about those things and gives you a network to like reach out and talk to people and say like, hey, how do I do this? Um, so it's nice to kind of have some built in mentors with your faculty there. Uh, in terms of, um, you know, more like more so like hard skills that helps my career growth. Uh, value base is great. I mean, it's a new, not new, kind of a new novel concept, um, not fully out there in the marketplace yet. Um, so like already being a hedge of what's currently in place kind of helps you guys thinking and gives people something to consider and be interested in. Um, so like having all of your foundation or your foundational courses well set out, just like Marshall was saying, like you have financial, operational, insurance, strategic, you can take IT, um, external stakeholder requirements, so you know what a credit rating, credit rating agency is. 
those kind of things are really important, but also pushing you beyond that boundary is something that can really, you know, help you grow in the risk management industry. Excellent. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate everyone's insights so early in the morning. Very, very helpful. Um, okay. Um, so I'm going to move on to our next question, which is, um, can you talk about the hiring trends you are seeing at your institution within the risk management space and the core skill set that makes candidates more valuable to your organization? Um, and Karthik, we'll start with you if, if that's okay. Sure. Uh, in terms of now, I think uh, hiring trends is definitely picking up. The last one year has been you know, pretty slow with a lot of uncertainties, but then uh, I seem to be some uh, light at the end of the tunnel. And you know, um, we are entering into the spring and summer with some kind of positivity. And you know, <laughs> um, so things people are looking forward to you know, getting back to some kind of normalcy. And uh, the, you know, the uh, uptick in the hiring trends comes along. Yeah. Um, yeah, specific to you know, Pin Mutual and our group of companies, uh, the EM team itself is you know, it's small and it's you know, it's positioned uh, in a unit strategic way. So you know, it's not like you know, we have a, a breadth of talent that's requirement, but within the individual spaces, like you know, financial risk management, insurance risk management, there are always opportunities that keep coming up. Uh, and uh, I think the key differentiator is uh, now uh, industry knowledge. Insurance is a specific line of work and not everyone has a, a good knowledge of not how it works. Uh, so that will be a differentiating factor when we consider candidates. And second is, you know, there's a lot of work that's happening in terms of building analytical capabilities. And to you know Marshall and these you know, earlier points, uh, learning good coding language will be key because a lot of work at least at the, at, the, at the analyst level or associate level gets done. And we always trying to you know, uh, evaluate how we can improve that program, the risk management program by using data analytics, you know, how to better serve our you know, internal management team as well as the board and as well as the you know, external agencies that uh, not consume our work. So you know, I think those two will be the key differentiating factors when, when we look for talent. Thank you. That's really helpful to know. Um, I guess if we could move on to you, Marshall, so you could answer that question. Yes. Um, like I learned my job during the pandemic, so I'm oh. the lucky one. But mm -hmm. I would say like in the big firm or in a firm, risk divisions continue hiring. And I do see like the like the increasing demand. So like, for example, our team was newly formed in last summer. So we are continue hiring the people in a firm. So I think the companies more pay more attention to the risk and not only like the financial risk, but all, all types of risks. And especially for example, technology risk, because like most of company uh, utilize more technology or move to the cloud. So I do think like they have the increasing demands in the risk field. This is really the good trend. In terms of like what qualities or what the skill sets the company looking for, based on my observation, I think like foundation is a risk knowledge. Like you can speak the common language, you know the basic, but the team didn't expect to like you know a lot. Like I mean, you know like advanced or you know everything because they want to train you, especially for like the young professional as the analyst, they want to train you. So most important they are looking for is what's your attitude? Are you willing to learn? Are you open to take suggestions? Are you flexible or like can adapt to the organization really quickly? I do think these qualities are what companies are looking for uh, for the young professional. And then mo and, and, and another thing is about communication because risk division sit as a second line. Basically our daily job is to have a meeting with first line or have a meeting with internal audit. We do need to have a communication with different stakeholders in the firm or outside of the firm. So communication skills is really important for all the risk professionals because your daily work will be communicate with people or even challenge the people. So I think this is the one skill set the team is looking for. Uh, this is all based on my own experience and observation. That's incredibly helpful. Thank you for that advice. Jay, would you um, talk to us a little bit about uh, this as well? Yeah, of course. Uh, so I can't speak for like my entire company because we're a 70,000 person company, but I'll, I'll just like specifically address my group. So I, I work in strategic risk advisory. So we're essentially consultants 
Uh, so the number one thing we're looking for in people is communication skills because we work with clients and usually our clients are either a CFO, uh, the director of risk management, some sort of similar title that people have very little time, especially little time to listen to the consultants that they're paying for. <laughs> um, so you got to get your point across quickly there. In terms of core skill sets outside of communications, because I don't want to sound like a broken record here, um, having a broad general skill set is helpful. Um, somebody who can balance qualitative and quantitative types of analyses, who can write well, who can come up with the quantitative framework to an abstract problem, um, you know, really just kind of a dynamic thinker overall. It's kind of hard to really sum up what you need to do uh, to do my job, although it's not that hard anybody can do it especially somebody who graduated from the program um in so when i was involved in recruiting recently like the number or the top things we we're looking for is communication leadership uh, ability to learn on their own um just because you don't always have time to train people even though we do whenever we have uh, the opportunity to do so um and also just like the ability to work with teams so it's really just, you know, what is your personality and how well do you work with others? Um, those are the main things that we try to assess when we're looking at candidates. That's really helpful to get that inside, uh, inside information on what you're looking for. Um, so it sounds like what I heard from the panelists today is that a strong base of knowledge, uh, a great attitude, excellent communication skills, and you know quantitative qualitative skills dynamic thinking and being able to write well and i think during the course of this program with every single course all of those factors come into play so it's constantly reiterated so thank you really appreciate that um all right so let's talk about a couple of uh, fun questions um can you talk about the professional network that you developed during the program and whether you continue to maintain deep ties with your fellow alumni and faculty and other members of your professional network um and we'd like to start with you marshall i do think like our program has the strong connection among the club even like we maybe you didn't talk like more frequently but people are re really nice Every time when you reach out, they are really very responsive and willing to talk. And I do see like my network built during the program is still remain the same or even stronger after I graduate. Like for myself, my tip is like maybe every three months or every two months, I reach out to some professors just to check out to see uh, what's going on and catch up with them a little bit or sharing my progress recently. I think this is the one good thing. Another is like like today's virtual event. It gave us a platform or opportunity to meet our alums. Uh, so this is a great opportunity, I think, to um to maintain us together. Um, and also I do think for us as alum, I always see some linking message or the up like incoming students reach out to me. And I, I always connect with them and share with them my experience or answer their questions they have. So as like the year I'm graduate students, I do have the opportunity to connect with the incoming students. So the, in this way, I always keep in touch with the program and build my co connection with the like next generation or next next batch of the students. So I do think like my network becomes stronger and like become like even larger after I graduate from the year program. That's uh, so good to know. Really happy to hear that. Um, Karthik, would you take that question? Yeah. Absolutely, and uh, uh, it's, it's uh, three and a half years since I graduated from the program, and uh, I still, um, this morning I got a text from one of my classmates from the day. So <laughs> now uh, we still part of the first iMessage group that we created for the value-based ERM uh, coursework, and you know, we still interact uh, uh, constantly and we do keep updated each other on how we are progressing in our professional and personal lives and you uh, know uh, through the course of the program you also uh, you know get into a uh, good uh, I would say in a contact with your faculty members specifically uh, and you know they have been tremendously uh, helpful in terms of you now assisting in me uh, moving on uh, to 
my you know the career post graduation as well as you not know, taking good interest in how they put it so every time you know that now uh, for recently you now when i got promoted to the chief risk officer a good bunch of uh, you know, messages came from the columbia uh, you know, you know, connections that i have on linkedin as well as on my personal email so you now it's wonderful it's a great uh, you know, cohort and you know it's uh, and i take every opportunity to you know, stay connected with the program and uh, you know, i do uh, whenever time for meeting you no know, uh, get into some kind of you know, guest lecture share my experience uh, specifically with the value based ERM program because we practice that uh, at Penn Mutual on a day to day basis and there are not uh, plenty of organizations who do that so you know, more from a first hand experience on how it is applicable uh, so you know, and uh, when i looked at my professional network uh, you know uh, over the years i have connected with a lot of uh, you know, graduates after uh, i have graduated from the program so you now the columbia is amazingly you know good in you know, how they um, you know make you feel involved even after you are graduated and you stay connected and today i made new friends as part of this panel discussion so now, that's how you keep it rolling forward that's great uh, columbia never lets you go and we never let columbia go is absolutely yep uh, jay would you um answer that question for us as well please yeah of course at similar cards like i got a text message this morning as well one of my friends texted me saying hey man glad to see you on the uh, on the webinar um, so yeah, the Columbia network never leaves you. Uh, in terms of faculty members, um, I think I called Tim for like a half hour or a couple months ago, just asking for like career advice. Um, I talked to my strategic risk management professor, uh, who I now work with as an associate. So I see her every week, but like I still talk to her about career advice type things. I talked to group members that I had during the program that at least every month, uh, maybe more frequently, something like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I see people and talk to people in the program all the time. Just hired somebody from the program, so I'm probably gonna see them every day. So that'll be <laughs> nice and close relationship there. Um, yeah, I, I've taken classes at like a lot of different universities and institutions. This is the strongest network I could see anybody getting. Um, it, it is a phenomenal group of people. Everybody's willing to reach out. I get people reaching out to me, just like Marshall and I'm sure Karthik. Um, always happy to talk to people and it's just kind of that collegial mutual respect friendliness that the program has developed so that's really been um a nice surprise and also something i very much appreciated and did not expect i couldn't agree more um and just personally as i'm evaluating various job opportunities i reached out to program leadership for their advice and i've been talking to all of my classmates who are working at various firms right now to understand the culture of the firm that they're working at and to you know get their advice on evaluating options so i think it's it's really incredible the kind of uh, network we develop here in this program okay our last uh, preset question is what advice would you give to current erm students who may soon be trying to land their first jobs so um, we will begin with karthik yeah, uh, I think you know, I'm not going to say any, something new here, uh, no, uh, but I will share what I did. So uh, in terms of you know, pick your industry where you want to work and get to know as much as you can by you now um, about that industry and uh, uh, you know, financial services can be you know, a broad category, but you know, within that, banks investment banks asset managers insurance companies are totally different so i uh, know understand that and i think uh, one of the good things i did as part of the program is you know you read a lot of 10 keys and 10 cues as part of the coursework and uh, it does give you some kind of an insight and you you will start liking uh, no more and you know, uh, and uh, getting into the program i was not an insurance guy at all and you know as i learned more uh, then I was interested and you know that kind of makes it easier for you to have the conversations and uh, have a you know, plan B. So I pick at least two industries is what I would say. And then uh, you now read uh, one of the first advices that I got from my strategic management uh, you know, lecture was you now subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. You know, stay up to date on you know, what's happening in the world and you know, what are the key things and you know, put your risk lens to that. You know? So you know, uh, that's what you are expected to do as a you know, ER professional is you now take the business concepts or you know, uh, problems, 
put the risk lens and then provide solutions. So now start doing that with you know, any information that you know get and you know, assembly that and you know, turn that into you know, how you can do, uh, how you would solve it. And in terms of uh, you know, networking is key. And I think you're in a good place. You have the Columbia tag with you, so it kind of you know, opens doors for you. So you already have the first thing done for you. So next is to, to make that impression, I think in you know, communication and you know, your ability to speak uh, the language of the person whom you are going to connect with will be key. Those are all excellent pieces of advice. I think really helpful for everyone who's getting back into the work environment. Thank you. Um, how about you, Marshall? How do you? How? Yes, um, I do have three like suggestions, but I think some of them may like, repeat my points before. <laughs> so the first is like to make full use of the resources, like faculties alums and also like virtual events like today's are all super helpful and also career design lab those resources around you just make full use of them and also explore more like outside of the school for example the risk association like i do know some faculty members they are like on the board or the member of the risk professional association and they do have they do hold more more events discuss about the trends also like the news in the industry so get involved or be the members of this association might be also helpful. They are like the good resources. Um, and second suggestion I would give is to have the clear career goal. I know my, like we might don't have the career uh, like clear career goal before you join the program, same as me, but along the way you study the courses, you will be more clear about which risk pillar I'm more interested in. For myself, I know I'm more interested in operational risk and technology risk. And the more I learn, I realize what is my specific goal. And then I know what certification exams is good to have. And also what courses is good to have on my resume in order to land a job in this area. I know risk division is like broader and it's good to have all the general knowledge, but be more specific on which, uh, which like the specific domain you want to like land a job at the beginning. So this will be helpful for the incoming students. Maybe try to think about this in the first semester or the second semester, and also speak to faculties as much as you can. And along this way, you will have more clear go about what roles and what industry you want to get in. And the, the last suggestion is like, to enjoy the time before the semester starts, <laughs> get ready like physically and mentally for the like <laughs> upcoming courses, but right now enjoy your time. <laughs> <laughs> Great point. Thank you, Marshall. Um, Jay, would you answer that question for us, please? Yeah, of course. Uh, so I took a few notes here. Uh, in terms of like advice to try and land your first job, uh, first, start early. It can take longer than you might expect. I think I was, I graduated from the program in May. I started looking for a job in like late July, early August preceding it which is probably over, overkill, honestly, but um, that, that's just to give students a perspective of timeline there. Uh, in terms of when you're actually applying to places, get an internal referral as often as you can. It significantly increases your chances of getting a first round interview. Uh, once you get into the interview, know your story on your resume really well. If you have to know how to walk somebody through your resume in about a minute or two, and it's got to sound phenomenal, just as phenomenal as all of these students are that are yeah. joining us today. Uh, in terms of other things, once you get into the interview, do your research on the person, Google them, see what articles they published, what's their career path, uh, come with questions. When they ask you, oh, so do you have any questions for me? This is not something new, I got this from Sims. Oh, you know, um, eventually I wanna have a you know, position very similar to yours one day. Um, you know, I've reviewed your LinkedIn and I've you know read some of your articles. If I could just hear from you how you got to where you are today, I'd love to hear about that. I start Excellent every question. single interview with that question. <laughs> um, follow up messages, attention to detail. So something like sending a thank you message to everybody you interview with, it shows a, a very nice touch there. Um, so those are just kind of like some of the little things that like for me were very helpful when I was job hunting. And then just like more generally at a high level, don't get discouraged. I think I got shut down from like a lot of jobs <laughs> before I found one. Um, so it can take a while to find the right fit, but it's really rewarding once you do find that perfect fit. Um, I couldn't agree more. It is definitely a process. 
and we have to stick through it. Um, my last question for you guys um, is, can you discuss what the most fun part of this program was for you? So we'd like to now focus on, we've done a lot of, uh, you know, talking about some very important aspects of the program. Let's talk about the fun stuff. So, uh, Marshall. I think the fun stuff is about the group projects. So because, because of the group projects, you make a lot of friends. And also like, it's interesting for our group projects, every weekend they came to my apartment, we did the group project together. And like every weekend, and after that, we will go for lunch or go for dinner or even like have like afterwards, like the happy hour. <laughs> so that is like the fun part for us. So we have the reason to like hang out. So after that, we have more, we make more friends like in our personal life. I think that is like the most, uh, like the interesting or important part uh, when I was a student in the program. And right now we're still keeping in touch. And I think, I hope after pandemic, we can hang out again. And yes, it's like the strong connection. We have the group chat and we also like catch up in the group um, quite often. So, um, even though I know there are a lot of group projects, you might feel painful during the semester. But when you look back, you do appreciate that time and you do appreciate like how how people are working with you and how nice like you finally deliver something you are proud of. Yep, absolutely. Karthik, what about you? I think uh, just being in the city was phenomenal, right? And you now unlike a sleepy university you know, town, which you know, most probably you end up being in, uh, Columbia, you know, the, the, where it's uh, not located, um, opens so many things for you to do. And you know, to Marshall's project now, uh, there are so many evenings, you know, even a cup of coffee can be so much fun uh, when you're at the campus. And, you know, and I love my time that I spent at both Butler and Uris. So you know, those are the two favorite spots for me within the campus. Uh, you know, uh, even to know, regroup yourself. Like you had a not so great call with a you know, recruiter or you no. Know, uh, so that's where you go back. You know, rethink about yourself you now get back in shape and you now and then you step out and then that's new york city for you to you know, be amazed every time you walk there i couldn't agree more i've lived in the city for almost 17 years and i love it uh jay what about you yeah my answers aren't too different here i like i personally value interpersonal reaction interactions um i love just the time i got to spend with my teammates whether it's taking the one train to and from class or grabbing a coffee or like a banana from Butler or just like kind of those little things in between classes, you know what I mean? And it's unfortunate that we do lose some of that during the pandemic now, um, but there are still like little things like going to the coffee chats, um, you know, just like cracking jokes with faculty. It's kind of like a weird, <laughs> it's like a weird situation, but it's fun, you know what I mean? Like uh, you find ways to make light of like the situation. Um, so like for me, it's, it's really, you know, the relationships you build here and it's something that we've already discussed at length. So I won't drill into this too much. Um, but for me, like those were the most fun aspects of the program. Those are all excellent points. Thank you guys for such an incredible discussion. Really appreciated all of your insights. I'm sure all of our viewers did as well. Uh, we hope that you got a lot of great information out of this and we hope to stay in touch with everyone. So thank you, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next panel. Thank you. Stay safe thank and take you. care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody.